Wow, these sound so close to my speakers. I've got nine headphones for your music studio here today. And I've got the industry standards, top sellers, budget picks, and I've even got some high-end headphones. I've tested these with audio interfaces, laptops, and a headphone amp. And I use them to track vocals and mix. I've even got a pair of headphones here for just $33. So why did I include them? Let's find out. Recommending a pair of headphones is not as easy as just saying, buy this one, it's the best. Because it depends on its application. Are you mixing, using these while you're tracking, recording vocals? And what about casual listening? Will you enjoy listening to music with them? So watch until the end because each of these headphones has its own benefits and drawbacks. And if you're just looking for the most neutral and flat headphones, I'll cover that too. This is not a sponsored video, but if you use any of the links in the description to buy one of these headphones, it helps out my channel. Thank you. If you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I have tons of videos about music production gear and tutorials on my channel. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do my research, provide tips, and give you honest advice about the latest gear. Before we begin, let me cover a couple technical terms that I'll use in this video. I'll give you the technical details, but ultimately it's about how well you reach your goals with these. Do you like mixing, tracking, and listening with these headphones? And are you happy with the results? That's what matters. I'm gonna display the frequency response for each of these headphones as I go through them. A wider frequency response range means you should hear lower lows and higher highs. Next, two headphones in this roundup, the Biodynamics, have very high impedance. Let's talk about impedance and why I chose the 250 ohm versions. Low impedance headphones require less power to achieve high volume levels. Higher impedance headphones require more power, but they provide better clarity in mids and highs. It may not be a huge difference to some listeners, but the Biodynamic 250 ohm headphones are widely regarded as their best. So I chose them for this comparison. If you're wondering if your audio interface will provide adequate power to high impedance headphones like these, check my video on budget audio interfaces. I tested those interfaces with 250 ohm headphones. Focusrite and Universal Audio Interfaces powered them just fine. All right. All right, let's get started. First up, let's talk about the Biodynamic DT770 Pro 250 ohm headphones. I've used these for a long time and have recommended them to you multiple times, but let's get into the details. These headphones originally retailed for $280, but now you can find them for around 160, which I think is an excellent value for what you're getting. The DT770s have the best sound separation among the headphones in this list. That means you'll be able to clearly hear every instrument in your mix and their position in the mix. It's much easier to find problems in your mix with these headphones. But other headphones may help you balance your mix better. The bass is definitely not as pronounced as others in this roundup, and you may find the highs a little too sharp for your taste. How about comfort? These are extremely comfortable for long periods of time. They've got these velvety soft ear pads, which feel great for long sessions. They're great to use while recording with a microphone, like when you put down your vocal track. And I also enjoy casual listening with these. But if you plan to use them with your mobile phone or laptop, consider getting a headphone phone amp. Because of the high impedance, the volume may be too low for you. In fact, the headphone amp made these really shine. Many reviewers on Sweetwater say these are the best headphones they've ever owned, even compared to the Audio-Technica's, which we'll look at next. The Audio-Technica ATH-M50X headphones are best sellers on Sweetwater and Amazon. Over 11,000 ratings on Amazon, more than any other headphone in this roundup. Here's a fun fact. Phineas, Billie Eilish's brother, uses these and loves them. But remember, gear doesn't win Grammys. These are just tools. So why are they so popular? Well, it's actually a little hard to tell. The collapsible design is nice if you're going to be traveling with these. The biodynamics don't fold up like this. And you can twist one side to listen with one ear. 
These headphones are not as comfortable as the Biodynamics. They actually feel a little tight on my head, but I've got a big head, so it may be okay for you. But other owners also complain of the discomfort of having these on for a long time. The ear pads have a nice leather feel and provide excellent isolation from outside noise, but my ears felt a little warm after using these for a while. So let's talk about the sound. What are they good for? Casual listening? Definitely. Mixing? Decent. These have the loudest bass of all the headphones in this roundup, so you have to watch out for that while mixing. Clarity is good with mids and highs, but I found that the bass just took over at times, overshadowing the mids. They're not as neutral as the Sony and Neumann headphones in this roundup, but that actually makes for a pleasant listening experience. The soundstage is not as good as the Biodynamics, but still better than the others in this list. I would recommend these for a producer or musician who needs good quality headphones that are very portable. These are easy to carry around or throw in a backpack. So what about open back headphones? Let's take a look at the Biodynamic DT990 250 ohm headphones. These and the AKG headphones in this roundup are both open back. That means sound leaks through the sides of the cans intentionally. This is supposed to improve the spaciousness of the sound, the stereo width, making them sound closer to a set of speakers. So do they? Well, yes. I compared the open back to the closed back 770s and found a difference. A small difference, but it was there. If you've got discerning ears, you will hear the difference. Otherwise, sonically, these are pretty much the same as the DT770 closed back versions. The comfort is the same as well. These are great for long sessions, so if you're mixing with these, you're gonna love them. Now, because of the open back design, they're not meant for use while recording with a microphone because of the noise leak. Also, you probably won't use these for commuting or in public places. Everyone's gonna hear what you're doing. And you can hear a lot of noise coming in as well. So best to be mixing in a quiet place. Still, I love the sound just as much as the 770s. When I started listening to the mixes through the 990s, I just wanted to keep listening and listening. It was hard to switch to another pair of headphones. That says something. So far, I've covered some reasonably priced headphones, but what do you get when you spend $500 or more? I'll let you know a little later in the video. All right, if you're looking for something more affordable, let's take a look at the Sony MDR7506. You've probably seen these headphones in tons of studio pictures. It's used by audio engineers, vocalists, everyone. Many reviewers call these industry standard because of their flat sound. When I tried them, I heard a very even spread of basses, mids, and highs. It was a very cohesive mix. But if you're trying to carefully listen to every nuance of each sound, these may not be right for you. The hi-hats in my beats just didn't come through as they did with the Biodynamics and Audio-Technica headphones. But these are among the flattest headphones I listen to. If you're looking for an enjoyable listening session, these aren't the best either. The mids were just too pronounced for casual listening. But wait, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This may be the mix you really need to hear. People seem to love these for monitoring, for tracking vocals too. They're reasonably comfortable but the build quality is not as good as more expensive headphones in this list. The ear padding is low quality and I'm not sure how long it will last, but they still provide better isolation than cheaper headphones in this list. And they are quite comfortable for my big head. These are not luxury headphones, but they will get the job done in your studio. All right, if you want something similar to the Audio-Technica's at a lower price, the Sennheiser HD280 Pro headphones are an excellent choice and many call these an industry standard. They're just $10 more than the Sony's and they sound excellent. The bass is good, but not as powerful as the Audio-Technica's. Still, I found it good enough. It didn't conflict with the mids as much, but the highs are much more subdued with the mids taking center stage. The HD280s have the best isolation of all the headphones in this roundup and let in almost no noise, but that may be partly due to the fact that they fit a little tight. They're comfortable, but may need to be broken in to feel better. And my ears got real warm quickly. The cable is very heavy and tight. I thought it was just me, but others complained about this too. These are an excellent pick for tracking, but not my favorite for mixing. The clarity and separation just wasn't as good as others in this list. All right. Let's take a look at the budget headphones next. By the way, if you're looking for a budget audio interface for your studio, I've rounded up the top seven in a video here. And if you need a mini keyboard controller, you'll find a comparison of the top ones available on my channel as well. All right, these 
are the cheapest headphones by far at $33. They're the one audio headphone, never heard of them before. So why did I include them in this list? Well, they were Amazon's recommended studio headphones, and these are the most popular DJ headphones on their site. So if you're shopping on Amazon, these are gonna be in your face. They have tons of reviews and people who say they're quite happy with them. They have a nice form factor and are pretty comfortable. Actually surprised me in the comfort area. They fold up real nice, so great for portability. But what about the sound? They are definitely not on par with the others in this list. They're missing a lot of clarity in mids and highs and the bass muddies up the mids. These are not bad headphones, just not up to the caliber of the rest, but hey, they're so much cheaper. To me, these sounded closer to consumer grade headphones. So are they a good choice for mixing and tracking? Well, I would have to say no. I would recommend that you save up a little money and go with the Sonys in this list, or even the Status CB1s, which we'll look at next. The Status CB1s are another very affordable set of headphones at $80. They came in a classy box that gave me high hopes on build quality, but when I took them out, they felt and looked a little cheap. When I put them on, isolation from outside noise wasn't that good, but they sound almost identical to the Sonys, and some reviewers say they're close to the Audio-Technicas from this list. I didn't think so. The Audio-Technica has had much more bass and better clarity in the highs, but the sound of the CB1s is very nice for the price. I'd say it's a more comfortable version of the Sony's. If $80 is your price point, I would recommend these. All right, so what do you get when you spend a few more hundred dollars on studio headphones? Well, I've got two headphones here that retail for a lot more than the others, but wait, one of them has dropped in price to less than $200. Let's check them out next. These are the AKG K702s. They retail for $439, but guess what? You can now find them for $169. I have the AKG 275s, which are $100 headphones, and I wasn't really impressed by them. These are different. The soundstage is wide due to the open back design. In this aspect, it seems similar to the Biodynamics in this list. That's the closest comparison. However, where the biodynamics are sometimes harshly bright, these are more subdued in the high frequencies. This made the AKGs more pleasant to listen to with certain mixes, but they do lack in bass, and when comparing them to the biodynamics, the bass gets lost a little. I love the design of these. They look really cool and high quality in my opinion, but when you actually tap on the materials, they sound like cheap plastic. The ear pads are super comfortable, these are self-adjusting, so they automatically extend to fit your head when you put them on. And they feel light and really fit well around my ears. I would say if you want the wide sound of open back headphones, these are an excellent choice, but you'll save some cash going with the Biodynamic 990s instead. All right, last, I've got the Neumann NDH20s. These are the heaviest headphones in this roundup at two and a half pounds and the most expensive, but they feel super premium. You've got steel and aluminum here, top grade stuff, and the ear pads feel so comfortable. These truly rival the Biodynamics in comfort. The Neumanns provided better isolation than most of the headphones in this list, which means the least sound leaked through the sides. The sound is also really flat. Mids are great and highs are not as in your face as the Biodynamics. The bass is subdued, but these sound great for mixing. I felt the sound separation is better on the Biodynamics, but this is still really nice, probably more realistic, resulting in better mixes. In fact, these headphones sounded closer to my studio monitor mix than any other headphone here. When I put these on, I thought, wow, these sound so close to my speakers. This is how I intended my mix to sound. I think this is a great choice for audio engineers, mixers, especially for long mixing sessions, but the price is gonna get you. And I think if you're just starting out with music production, these may be overkill for you. Here are some final thoughts on my top recommendations for you. The Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones sound great for casual listening, especially if you like your bass. The clarity in mids is almost on par with the Biodynamics, but the comfort for long sessions worries me 
and other reviewers as well. And the soundstage can't compare to the Biodynamics or the AKGs. Still, at $150, I think they're a really good overall value if you prefer more bass. The Sonys are also a great value at $90, and if you're gonna be tracking or mixing, these are an excellent budget pick. Not as pleasant to listen to casually, but a great workhorse for your music production needs. After the Biodynamics, I'd want a pair of these in my studio. Both the Biodynamics are true winners for me. The stereo width, the soundstage, and just using them to pick out the problems in your mix, top notch. I mean, you can place your sound more accurately with these. Remember to get the closeback version, the 770s, if you plan to use them for monitoring while recording with a microphone. And you may need a headphone amp depending on your audio interface, or if you plan to use these with a laptop or a mobile device. But I suggest testing them with your gear first to make sure you really need an amp. When it comes to soundstage, the open back 990s have a little advantage over the closed back DT770s and are better than the open back AKGs in my opinion. But if you have to choose one, I'd go for the DT770s because they are more versatile. Finally, the Neumanns are a high quality, superior sounding set of headphones, excellent for mixing, excellent comfort. You get what you pay for. If your budget allows it, I would highly recommend these. You'll find the latest prices for all these headphones by using the links in the description. If you liked this video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe, make the music you love, and I'll see you guys later.